Good evening, Hippolyto. Good evening, Marlene. Yeah, so Kingston appeared and entered the courtroom at about 2.45 today's time here. Um, he was heavily um, secured by security officers, I believe, federal agents, and he wore um, prison attire um, because he is in jail and remand, and he had pled guilty as well to those um, counts. He entered the, the, the box, and one of the things that the prosecutor first asked him was, who was Jacob Kingston? And he would be who he was in terms of his early years. He is a 43-year-old man. And one of the things that he is being charged with or alleged against him is the crime of polygamy. Now, Kingston, in an effort to, to lay the foundation for their case, the prosecutor um, went into the details of his childhood up to his adulthood and what he did to create Washake Renewable Energy, which is the company involved in this huge um, tax fraud here in the US. Um, he mentioned that he has a PhD in mechanical engineering, which he got uh, from the Utah University. Also that he started Washake in 2006. Now, today um, the, the trial broke off at about 4.30 um, because of the snow and the weather here and the, the federal judge mentioned that she wanted to accommodate the jurors in order for them to reach home safely. So they broke off at 4.30 um, this evening. Not Belize wasn't mentioned. I believe that the prosecutors haven't gotten to, to that angle of the, of the case as, as yet. Yeah. What they're doing now is to lay the foundation in terms of how this scam originated since uh, about 2008. Now, Kingston's testimony is extremely critical in this case. Uh, he, in fact, took a, a plea bargain. Um, talk to us about, I, I know you've been talking with different persons on the ground um, and also uh, paying attention to just how much they've been preparing for this particular testimony. Uh, let's talk about the significance of what he's expected to share. Now, Jacob Kingston is the witness for the prosecutors. He is the one who worked along with Lev Thurman. He is the one who worked along with Joshua Wallace and other co-conspirators in this massive um, uh, tax fraud case in the U.S. And it is his company through which um, the monies are funded through. And other several companies that was originated after Washaki and, and so forth. Kingston mm -hmm. is to lay the foundation as to what happened since 2008, leading up to 2013, and the involvement of Lev Thurman. Um, at the end of today's session, the prosecution, 2008, the prosecution asked uh, Mr. Kingston, how much involved was Lev Derman at that stage, entire um, scheme? In 2008, he wasn't involved as yet. And they, they didn't go much into Lev Derman as yet because, as, as I mentioned, the, the judge wanted to break off. Yeah. But his so they're going in sequence in time. They're going in sequence in terms of beginning at the um, the start since since Washaki was created mm -hmm. the foundation making sure that the jurors understand how this complex tax scheme got off the ground um, and where at what point did it involve Lev Derman mm -hmm. and of course what we all anticipate here is hearing the connections uh, that they had Lev Derman and also Jacob Kingston with Belize yes so as we know that the uh, prosecutors entered a list of exhibits and in that list of exhibits um, there's the text message allegedly between jacob kingston and john saldiva that has not um been spoken about as yet we do believe that the prosecution will touch on that since they um listed out in the exhibits um hopefully that is by tomorrow kingston is slated to testify um tomorrow Friday and way up to Monday, we are not sure at what point will the prosecutors touch on that Belize angle, but it would, I would imagine, establish that um, corruption angle to the whole case and that bribery case um, in terms of the whole Lev Derman involvement. Now, in terms of Lev Derman um, connection to Belize, we know that he got his nationality certificate in 2013. Um, interestingly, um, he has, I believe, family members in the courts throughout the, the trial. And today, one of them approached me, asking me um, where I, where from where I was. I told him, you know, I'm from Belize. And he goes like, he figures that I'm from Belize. And he says that he has been in, in Belize in San Pedro, this family member of Lev Thurman. And he, he goes like, um, 
he, he is Belizean as well. So I asked him, do you have Belizean nationality as well? He goes, no, he doesn't have Belizean nationality, but he has been in Belize with, I guess, Lev Derman and specifically in San Pedro. Now, you, of course, Hippolyto, um, are there because this is a critical matter for us here at home. And uh, while we have been getting reports from the media there, we really needed our eyes and the ears on the ground. So you can share. There are cameras allowed in the courtroom. Um, tell us a bit about just the demeanor of Kingston and, and Derman in the case itself, in, in the trial. Well, as, as Kingston appeared in court today, he seemed very relaxed. He seemed very prepared in terms of what his responses would be to the prosecution's questions. In terms of Lev Thurman, he is beside his team of attorneys led by Mark Garagos. Um, you know, he communicates with Garago in terms of giving him instructions to object, to object to certain statements or questions by the prosecution and the witnesses. Um, today, I didn't see Mr. Kingston looking over to, to Lev Thurman, but I did see Lev Derman's piercing eyes looking at uh, Mr. Kingston mm -hmm. um, as he explained the early stages of Washaki and at what point did Lev Derman himself became involved in the whole mm -hmm. scheme. Now, what we have found in, our list, in the documents that we have received so far, uh, which includes reference to the text messages with John Saldiver, um, those are two specific references that we'll be looking forward to. But there are other do um, documents or exhibits that should include um, some of the relationship that they had with Belize. One includes uh, Lions Gaming Company and is also uh, looking at property that is owned in the, in the free zone. Um, tell me a bit about what you have found out about this so far. Yes, not much have been said in terms of that specific details of, of the case here in, in Utah. As I said, the U.S. prosecutors haven't touched, are just delving into the Kingston um, case in terms of he starting out the Washaki business. Mm -hmm. But I want to point out that in the, during the Prime Minister press conference, um, he was asked about that specific piece of land. Unfortunately, the reporter back then um, referenced the wrong, the, the free zone. He mentioned the Benke free zone, but I believe that um, Lev Thurman has property, I believe, in the Corazon free oh, zone. Wow. And there's the Lions Gaming license that he was granted to to run an, a Russian casino mm -hmm. in the Corazon free zone. Yeah. Which is registered in Belize, in fact. Indeed. And I think one of the exhibits mentions uh, the communication and the banking correspondence when it comes to that, to the to the Lions Gaming Company. Yes, and we're hoping that the prosecutors will touch more on that in terms of Washaki Internationals um, and Lev Thurman's um, transactions abroad other than the U.S. Mm -hmm. Now, I know Hippolyto also, uh, you've been paying attention to some of the previous reports as well. One of the key things that I think Belize is awaiting to hear is the content um, of the, those text messages. And uh, there have been some of those text messages leaked before, not the specific text message that we're waiting, which is the communication between Kingston and Saldiver. But you, you are aware, or you have shared with us, that uh, in fact, even in the text messages, they seem to be talking in code. Tell us a bit more about that. Sure. I, on, I believe on Monday, um, when I was on Open Your Eyes, I read an article by Fox 13 News here in Utah, and they had a PDF file on their website, an indictment against one of the Kingston family members. And it spoke about the co-conspirators here in the US and some individuals who were being bribed to interfere in the case mm -hmm. in the 2018-2019 investigation. And it lists some text messages between Kingston and the an individual one is, mm -hmm. is what appears on the indictment. And they don't speak directly in terms of how they operate. Um, they speak in code messages. For example, um, Kingston would message individuals one and say, I have gotten the food for the dog, the dog food is ready. And he would reply, okay, I'll pick it up at some place and, and so forth. So um, in terms of, of those messages is coded. So you won't see a direct um, message or, or a sentence that would say, I have deposited certain amounts of money here. Here you can pick it up in Miami or any sort of that. So we believe um, the text messages that Kingston is speaking about allegedly would not necessarily be straightforward. 
And we're hoping that the prosecution would, would point that out in terms of this code that these individuals are, are speaking with. Mm -hmm. Yes, so we're waiting to see if it's going to be the similar type of communication that we see in the text messages between Kingston and Saldivar. Now, the, uh, the testimony of Kingston is extremely critical um, in this case. They, he, in fact, uh, took a plea deal, and he is expected to really build all the connections and, and lay out the foundation as to how the tax fraud took place and uh, sharing the information on how they laundered the money. Um, tell us a bit about some of the other other information that they're hoping to get from this testimony. Well, what I can tell you is that for Kingston, he was scheduled to, to testify um, on Tuesday, mm -hmm. and everybody's eager for his testimony. Mm -hmm. um, it will take days, as I mentioned, up until Monday is what the prosecution had um, indicated to, to the federal judge and agreed to by the defense. Now, Kingston is, is to... He is the, the connection to everything. Mm -hmm. He is the connection to the to the point where Lev Derman began involved in this, began involving in this um, tax scheme, as well as other Kingston family members and other forces at B, different companies that were created to to um, jail the IRS of over five hundred million dollars of, of tax fraud. Um, it is also expected that during his testimony, it will be revealed at what point or at what level um, the Derman got involved. And one of the things that they managed to establish or were trying to establish in the other previous witnesses is that Lev Derman, after 2008, called out the shots. He was the one behind, he was the moving hand behind the scene, as I, as, uh, if I can say, um, giving instructions to se several individuals to collect certain debts um, from Washaki to the funnel monies to different companies and to falsify documents, as well as to um, report to the IRS or to the, to the US Treasury that they have been selling B99 or B, B100 biodiesel when in they, were, they were doing no such thing in order to, to collect that tax on that um, um, sale. Yeah. Yes. So the trial is expected to last for another few weeks, uh, but Kingston's testimony, I, I believe you've said already, is, is for the next few days. Yes, initially what was reported is that trials should last between four to six weeks. Um, today, uh, again, it was indicated to the court that Kingston would testify until Monday. Now, because of the weather, um, the, the judge is taking that in, into consideration in starting off about 10 o'clock tomorrow morning, giving Kingston the entire day, but they will break earlier to allow jurors to arrive home safely. And that is expected to continue to Friday to um, to one hour delay in the mornings, mm -hmm. and about a half an hour earlier break off in the in the evening, and then they continue back on Monday. Again, we do not know at what point will the police angle be mentioned or delved into, and we're hoping that the prosecutors would note or point out that those text messages and ask Kingston to explain what those text messages mean and what are the contexts of those text messages. Okay. Well, we look forward to the subsequent reports.